is our first presentation. I know we're so excited. So, y'all have all, you've been in Area 2 a while. The, the real question is, do you know everything there is to know about Area 2? Yeah. The answer is no, because I don't even know everything there is to know. I try. I try to put together this lovely comprehensive guide to Southern Region Area 2. It's trademark, so you have it. It's mine. But we're going to go through a couple of the things you do need to know. So who are we? We've got a couple of officers who introduce ourselves, but we'll go ahead and formalize it. I'm the Area 2 Venture President, Amy Herman. Hi, I'm the Vice President of Communications. That's Jessica. And <laughs> Vice President of the Room of the Air. <laughs> and then Casey's not here right now. He's our VP of Admin for the area. And then um, our VP of Council Support at the moment is Megan Richards. So that's who we are. We also have a couple committee members that help us out. Two communications committee members. One of those is Ian Pierce. He is our webmaster. He's in charge of making our beautiful website that will be coming out by the end of September. So keep an eye out for that. And then our social media chair is Ian Greenway, who cannot be here because it's his birthday weekend. So that's more than the next time. And then our adult advisors, who are Mr. Bush. Woo! Lovely, Mr. Bush. And then it's Maggie who is our Associate Advisor for Communications. We don't have anybody else right now. Well, we're, we're about to promote somebody. Mr. Mall has been approved to be our Associate Advisor for Admin. <laughs> and I'm over on the committee. Mr. Mr. McDonald is on the Area Venture Committee, and he is our Finance Chair. He is our Finance Chair, so he deals with the money. <laughs> so if you need money, yes. all right. that's where you go. There we go. <laughs> So where are we? We're a pretty big area, not as big as Area 3, but we're still pretty big. So we cover four states, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas, and Louisiana. We take the top bit of the Oklahoma panhandle, and then we cut off down there. So we have nine councils, which hopefully you'll know some of them. So Caddo area, which is Oklahoma in the east, Circle 10, the Dallas area, Northwest Texas, which is... Wichita. Wichita. Yeah, it's Wichita, that's right, Wichita. I couldn't think of it. Um, East Texas area, which is that Tyler. Boulder Spring, Amarillo, Longhorn, Fort Worth, that's right, Longhorn. Norwella, which is out of Shreveport, South Plains, which is out of Lubbock, and then Texas Trails, which is out of Abilene. So, very large area, makes traveling very difficult. But it's, I guess it's okay because we only have four VOAs right now and they're all clustered together. So, that makes it a little bit easier. What does the area do? So our main, our main thing that we do as an area is we support you guys, right? So you are our councils. It is our job as an area of UA to make sure that you have the resources for programs, for whatever sort of forms you have to fill, like your JTEs, we help you with that. And then if you are from a council that doesn't have a VOA, it's also our responsibility to help you start a VOA, although we have nobody here from a council that doesn't have a VOA. Uh, we also help facilitate inter-council communications. So, for instance, if Longmore was having an event like, say, Catalyst, and they say wanted some Circle 10 people to show up, we would be in charge of giving them that boost in Circle 10 so that they maybe have more Circle 10 people coming. So if you have an event that you want more people to come from around the council, you come to us. And then we also relay information from the national and regional levels that's changing, so sometimes they have changes in um, standards and the SOPs. It's our job to tell you what those are and to make sure that you're implementing them properly. And then, do we have an area theme? Yes, we do. It's Cowboys this year, and I hope that it stays Cowboys forever because we can't do Texas theme, but we can do Cowboy theme. <laughs> so, you know how I am. And I think that's everything. That's our area. Do we have any questions about area two? I know there's a lot of stuff um, that we cover. Obviously, we're a large area, but. Anything that I did maybe touch on that you have questions about? Questions about officers? Questions about what we can do? No, that's great. <laughs> so now we're gonna. We're gonna I, have, I have a question. Can yes. I, if uh, if a council in our area is having an event like, say, for example, Power Forum. Power Forum. And let's just say, for example, the Circle Ten is gonna set kind of centrally located, or let's just say Circle Ten is gonna host a Power Forum. Can can folks from other councils go? To to the Circle Tens I imagine, yes, you probably just have to get in contact with the lead, right? And then ask. 
And now you've been elected. We're there. You have to act like an officer, which is kind of hard sometimes because sometimes we don't want to do things that are courteous and kind. You know, you can't always. Sometimes you have those. So this is our etiquette presentation. How do you act like an area officer? Or not an area officer, a football officer. Um, that's a beautiful acronym that I have come up with. It stands for Manners, Accessibility, Presentation, and Service. Those are going to be your four key things on how to act like a council officer. I keep saying area officer. You're not area officers. Some of you are on the area unit, but it's not relevant. So manners. There's a lot of things that are obvious. You know, you follow the scout oath and law. You're following the principles of you know, leave no trace. Youth protection, there's no bullying, harassment of any kind. These are the obvious things, the things you know that have just come with being a scout. Some of the things that aren't as obvious, no drama laws, no gossiping about your peers, no gossiping about other people that within units, no gossiping about other councils. I know it's hard sometimes. We have to take a step back and realize that venturing is above our own personal, our own personal problems, disputes, right? So no drama llamas. Can anyone give me an example of a drama llama? I know there's lots of different types of drama llamas, so let's talk about some moments you might see this upcoming term. But come on, we've all had a drama llama. Maybe not a venturing, but surely a school. Yeah, a school, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody? Yeah, give me a drama llama. Um. <laughs> Don't get too personal. <laughs> uh. I guess like uh, one for example could be like you're like friends, really close friends with uh, someone on the VOA, um, and then <coughs> something happens that like breaks your friendship, and you guys are still serving out your term, or someone like leaves, and then it causes a big crack in the VOA. So broken friendships or relationships. Um, that's a type of drama law. Clicks are drama llamas. Um, those sorts of things. Anything where you're creating a natural divide or not a natural divide within your VOA, especially anything that has a tendency to split them and make them unable to communicate effectively and as a consequence of your job. So, some other things that are so obvious. Your social media. Because you're an officer, you need to be watching what you post. You are now a reflection of venturing and your counsel, which means if you post things that aren't appropriate publicly, that can come back to bite you and venturing in the moment. So, some things. Uh, watch what you're being tagged in. Anyone can tag you on Instagram or anything, right? So make sure they're not tagging you in things that you shouldn't be tagged in, or maybe things that you did do, but you would rather not be tagged in. Get rid of those. Um, root beer. It's shaped like a beer bottle. Same thing goes for red solo cups. It might not be alcohol, but just don't post it because so someone from far away knows what it looks like. Um, and then political views or religious views, that, uh, we sh don't post them on your Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Just try and keep it clean. It avoids controversy. As well, those things might not necessarily be wrong. It could sometimes stir up unneeded drama. So any questions about social media? All right. So the fun one. It inevitably happens, people date within the VOA. You're working with people that you see a lot and who have a lot of similar passions. So inevitably you will come across a relationship either in your venturing or VOA life. But we do have expectations for dating. So you are allowed to date. There's nothing we can do to stop you, right? So you can, but we're going to go ahead and stipulate some things. So obviously you can't PDA at venturing events. You can't PDA um, at any scouting event. You're also not allowed to PDA on your public social media. It's kind of the same idea that um, if you post you with a red solo cup, it gives a bad impression. It does the same thing on your social media. So if you and your significant other are both adventuring and you post on social media as like a couple, like a couple sorts of things, try not to do that because that can inadvertently give across the wrong a bad image. Um, your relationship should be kept private to venturing, i.e. if I find out about it, you're not keeping it private enough, right? So. Keep it on the down low. Don't post about it. Um, and then if your relationship does start to interfere with your VOA life, whether that's a breakup or you are just not doing your job because you're more focused on your significant other, we're going to talk your president or whoever will talk to your advisor, and then your advisor will have to review your conduct. Um, and unfortunately, relationship drama can um, be a means for dismissal if it is not correct. So just keep that in mind if you do choose to pursue a relationship with the VOA. I know this is a touchy subject, but it's kind of awkward. So
so it's okay. No one's no one's in trouble yet. So does anyone have any questions about dating in the community and relationships? Alright, everyone got it though? So you can date it, just be selective about who you tell and what you do. Accessibility. What is accessibility? Mean? <coughs> what do you think accessibility means when you're an officer? Yes, please talk. <laughs> There when you need to be there. All right. Who? Charles. Uh, <laughs> be available if someone's trying to contact you. Being available if someone's trying to contact you. When you're trying to get some kind of contact information out there so people can actually get in touch with you. All right, all right, that's great. This is actually some of the stuff we're going to talk about. Response policy. You do have a response policy. You're expected to respond to all forms of communication with you related to your VOA work within 48 hours or so now. That does not mean you have to complete the task. So if I emailed Ian and I was like, Ian, I need the website set up, that's a that's a month's task. You know, that's not something he can get at night. I don't expect him to finish that in 48 hours. What I do expect is that he will email me back, group me back within 48 hours and be like, okay, I'm working on it. Here's what I expect to be done. Right? So you don't don't think that means you have to be done with the task because that can be really daunting. No, you just have to acknowledge that you are working on the task and explain what you will be working on. Um, carbon copying. Oh, it's a group. Sorry, I pulled it for a reason. Group me. When you guys get messaged on Group me or a lot of other platforms, it doesn't notify us that you received a message, right? So if I were to send a chat and then no one responds to it, I have no way of knowing if y'all got it because it doesn't tell me that you've read it. Which means you need to be responding. Even if it's just like a blanket statement for everyone, you're like, okay, I got it, sounds good. Or you can like the comment, just something that knows that I that you've seen that message so that I'm not worrying, like, are they checking their me? Does Samantha know that she has something to do? Does he know he has something to do? Just do that so that you, your officers are aware, your advisors are aware. Carbon copying. When you are emailing for venturing, it is your responsibility to carbon copy your advisors or your president, if you're your vice president. The reason we do that is a security reason and an accountability reason. So what that does is it, one, keeps your advisor in the loop. Two, make sure that if something happens and there's any discrepancies in what someone's saying about what you said, your advisor can find it and be like, no, this is what happened. It protects you. So you definitely want to carbon copy your advisors and your presidents on everything. And then three, it also makes it way easier for the following term to find information about what you were doing so that it doesn't get lost in the void of emails. Everyone does know how to carbon copy, right? I know that's something, okay, so if you don't know how to carbon copy, your email line, you've got a two, it was from to CC, BCC. So carbon copy, you put in an email there, it's the third line down, and then it's gonna send them a copy of whatever it was. You just need to make sure you're doing that because it really makes your advisor's life easier. Presentation. Presentation has to do with a lot. It can start with your uniform. So there's a lot of don'ts about uniforming, right? Your uniform is a physical manifestation, manifestation of venturing. So you need to make sure that it's correct. As a council officer, you can't have your unit numbers or unit GTEs on there. So unit numbers, unit GTEs. Wait, as a council? Yeah. That was one of the, right, Ella? Mm -hmm. no? uh, council, y'all are allowed to still have unit numbers. I thought it was the, is it the president's area. Program? Starting at area, you need to remove council. Oh, or, I mean, right. um, okay, then y'all unit numbers. numbers. But Correct. try to avoid, like, fake patches and lots of families, especially, like, stay away from fake patches. So, like, um, there's lots of fake knots, but you guys can have unit numbers, which is really nice. Uh, what you do have to have, you have to have the World Scouting emblem, you have to have your CSP, which is your council shoulder. Uh, so that one, um, you have to have your position patch, which not everyone, the VPs aren't going to have one, but your presidents will, so that'll be this one. <coughs> your VOA emblem patch, which for y'all is the silver one, and then your appropriate loops, which are this, since if you're a council, it's going to be silver from the area, it's gold. And then things that you might like to have that are really cool, interpreter strips, if you speak a foreign language, any of your venturing awards. Um, knots that are real, NYLT train strips, which are these, OA flaps, and name tags. Those are all nice things that you are allowed to have, just to clarify. Questions on uniform? All right. So uniforming for the occasion. There's different types of uniforming and dress depending on where you're going. If you're going to a formal council banquet, you're obviously going to dress a little different than if you're just going to a unit event. So at your formal council banquet, whatever it is, 
You need to make sure that you're in your proper uniform. You need to avoid having dangly. You need to make sure that everything's up to date. You're allowed to wear one of your VLA medals if you have one at a time. You're not supposed to wear more than one. And the same goes for your medals. You're only allowed to wear four, I think, four. Your five. Five is the max of the medals. So like your Eagle, Summit, Quest, um, Quartermaster. Quartermaster, things like that. You can wear those, but you're not supposed to wear more than five because after that, it starts getting a little obnoxious. If you're going to a unit event, <laughs> There's a different dress code. The expectation when you're going to a unit event is that you're not representing the council of district your crew, right? So that means you're going to be wearing your green loops. And the reason that we ask y'all to do that is because at that moment, one, you're not representing the VOA, and two, it sometimes has the inadvertent effect of making people feel as though you're more, you're like lifted above, and sometimes people will treat you differently, or you might inadvertently treat other people differently because of your position. So we just go ahead and ask that when you're not at VOA stuff, you're wearing your normal uni uniform. And if you don't have one, so like I know some people like can't afford to have two uniforms, just switch out your loops, right? Because it's, you know, uniforms are expensive, but that's an easy way to go ahead and do that. Repping and repping mentoring. So act politely when you're in your VUA stuff, right? It's your job to communicate that mentoring is an accepting place, a polite place, a place where you can be taken seriously. You need to be prepared to answer questions. Right, about venturing, about what the VOA is, about what the VOA does. When is your council event? You need to know those sorts of things, right? Um, you need to have something to write on. So I don't have one right now, but usually I keep a um, one of those like flip, small flip books and a pen with me when I go to VOA stuff. So like I had one at our Southern orientation. That's a good thing to where if people ask you questions, you can write them down. Because it's so easy to be like, oh yeah, I'll get that, and then you forget it, right? Because we're human beings, we forget things all the time. So have one of those on you. If you don't have one, use your phone. Have a notes folder in your phone that's all that big stuff. Um, no adventuring has to offer. That kind of goes hand in hand with your questions. And then if you are capable, have business cards or a slip of contact information or keep paper on you so that you can write your contact information out to people who want it. Right? So if they're like, oh, I have a question about this, you're like, I can't get that answer now. But here, this is my contact information. Email me, I'll get it to you later. Or conversely, you can ask them to give them your, their contact information, give you their contact information, so that you can contact about them later. All right? So just be prepared for those sorts of things. Your job as an officer is to answer questions anyone anyway, has questions. So we have a lot of questions that are going to talk about. This is a very cool thing to go I've listed a very long list of things that you might be asked as an officer. We're going to go through them, we're going to talk them out, discuss potential answers, and then we might brainstorm some more questions. Cool? Alright, so what does mentoring have to offer that other programs do? Obviously we're in a place right now where Scouts BSA offers for both females and males. You have to be ready to all explain what mentoring has to offer that Scouts BSA does, that, that uh, Sea Scouts does, it, that Exploring does. It. So, not my area officers. No, no. Um... Are you asked yes. what they're invited? We're going to talk. Okay. We're going to talk and then we're going to talk about some right answers, some good answers. So how would you guys answer this question? What was the question again? What does mentoring have to offer that none of the other scouting programs do? I'm going to start just picking people with troubles. I know that in the shooting sports range, mentors are allowed to shoot handguns and stuff like that, but the scout PSA is not. All right. But it depends where you're at. You may not want to bring that up. That's true. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Alice. Sure. Um, okay. I know. If y'all don't answer, I'm just going to start okay. begging people. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So, mentoring offers more freelance, I feel, than Scouts BSA does. Because Scouts BSA is so much focused on the rank, while mentoring. It's like, in Sea Scouts, you, it's mainly focused on the, the like water sports and things to that area. Mm -hmm. And Explorers is more of a career-based path. So venturing allows you to experience all these things all together. And you can work on your ranks while you're in a venture crew and you're in a venture crew. Okay, all right. So flexibility is one of the things that venturing offers. All right, anything else that makes us different? Our dark green uniforms. Our dark green <laughs> Our superior uniforms. That's another green thing that we offer. So yeah, the big things that you're going to hit on are program differences and the flexibility differences, right? Soft skills for resume. Soft skills for resume. Yeah. Flexibility is the big thing that we offer that none of the other programs do. As a crew, you can have a focus, right? And you, through your crew, you can do whatever you want. That's always something I highlight. 
It's very important because they're like, well, I'll just do any scouting if I want to go camping. No, venturing is more than camping. Venturing is I can do what I want, when I want, with who I want, right? So I do scuba diving. That's cool. You can't do that through Scouts BSA. You can't do that through exploring. Maybe do that through Sea Scouts. That's debatable. <laughs> so find that thing. Tell them you can do what you want. Are you passionate about knitting? Cool. You can start a knitting group. You can start a survival cooking group. You can do whatever you want. That's our big thing. All right. What is the structure of a unit life inventory? It's youth led. That's the big difference, right? So tell me, outside of youth led, what is there in your traditional group? A president. There's a president. <laughs> now, <laughs> vice president of, yeah, you've got your vice presidents. What are your vice presidents of? Admin. 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 program. Now, yeah, okay, see, Secretary. Secretary. You can have a lot of positions, right? There's lots of leadership opportunities because it is youth led. So you have to be a say, the adults, they plan most of this stuff. But in venturing, it's youth led. Alright. What external support does mentoring provide? So in Cub Scouts, we have Den, there's a pack that supports you. And Boy Scouts, you have a district that supports you and a council. What do we have in mentoring? Like if you met, you're part of it. <laughs> the VOA. That's right. The VOA is your external support. They provide programming. They provide um, any sorts of forms you might need, resources for trainings, right? The VOA is the backbone of mentoring. What does the VOA, what's so special about the VOA? What's so special about the VOA? What makes it different? Yeah, from like council and district. Yeah, what does the VOA do that the regular council can't do? The VOA is you fled for all the boy scouts. <coughs> yeah, it goes back to the youth lit. It's important. Kids like to hear those youth lit because it's like, wow, that means I can do things that I actually want to do because youth understand you for the most part. Are there trainings specific to venture? Yes. Yeah, what are they? ILSC. ILSC, introduction, introduction, <laughs> introduction and leadership skills for crews. There's Ty four of them. Kodak. It's goal setting and time management, mentoring, and then project, project management. Those are the four that are specific to mentoring. Right? So we do things like, yeah. that help youth become better leaders and also just help kids be better at managing themselves. Like goal setting and time management, great for entry, also good for knowing how much time you need to not be procrastinating your homework. Um, so <laughs> applicable life skills all around. Um, are there any other things that venturing does? What else do we do? Kodiak. We do Kodiak. All right. What are things that venturers are eligible to participate in, but maybe not necessarily venture? Venture fest. Venture, venture fest. That's a program. All right. We're talking about trainings right now, but yeah. NYLT. NYLT. Venturers can participate in NYLT. They can participate in NAIL. Well, now it's based on first. Uh, powder hormone if you're over 18. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 14. 14? Mm -hmm. They changed it? Yeah, they changed it. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> what, if you're, what if you're 18 and eventually you can do wood badge? Yeah. yeah, they do wood. So wood badges, a lot of them have a venturing crew that's on staff. That's one of the cool things that only venturers can and, do. And you can participate in wood badge if you're over the age of 18. Yeah. All right. So venturers have a lot of opportunities, and because venturers can be over 18, they get a lot of the adult opportunities. Um, does it cost money to be in both venturing and in Scouts PSA? An extra dollar. So it costs money for your first registration, but once you're in, if you're already in the Scouts PSA, if you're already in Sea Scouts, applying to be in venturing costs no additional money. Right? That's something important. A lot of people are like, I don't want to pay the fee twice. You don't have to pay the fee twice. You pay it once, and it's for everything. It's an all-access pass, right? <laughs> so everything Scouting has to offer. Um, are awards the center of venturing as a program? No. no, they aren't. But does that mean that the awards aren't important? No. Okay. So let's go to this. is a great debate. I love hearing this. There's some people that think awards aren't at all important to venturing, and there's some people that think they're super important. Can we get some like? Let's get some debate going. What are some of the reasons that awards are important to venturing, and why might you sell them? They look cool on you. They look cool on your uniform. They're, 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 great, for, they're great for uh, resumes and other things like they're that. They're great for resumes. You can get that on your resume. It's just as cool as an eagle, except it's venturing, so it's green. Yeah. That's cooler. I think summit. Summit. Yeah. Uh, Who's working on their summit? <laughs> 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 Who's working on their summit? 
We got three people. Okay. So awards, they look cool in your uniform. They look good on resumes. They're also just fun to get, and you get a sense of accomplishment. Why might it be okay to tell people that awards are not the focus of the country? You can choose what you want to do. Sometimes. Because um, the awards aren't like, because when you're explaining it, some people think that like they don't want to have like a super structured program. Like yeah, they think they think back, they get the PTSD back to their Eagle days, and they're like, no, <laughs> never again, <laughs> right? So sometimes being like, no, awards aren't the focus of entering and fool people and they would have otherwise been in it, right? Any other input on that yet? Can I just say from an advisor perspective, the awards, if you do the program right, your units are done well, you can get recognition for the awards just by participating in the units. And a lot of people don't realize how much towards the awards they've done. And they're like, oh, yeah. I'm halfway there. Yeah. I can yeah. actually do that. I just had to do a couple of presentations or whatever. It's also nice to note that even if they're a little scared or like hesitant to start working on awards, the venturing awards are like, it's not like getting your eagle, right? It's not like, there's so many requirements and it's boom, boom, boom. A lot of the requirements, it's like a mini project that you can decide for yourself. It's not like tie X, Y, Z knots. Yeah, you don't even know it's what you're doing. Make a project to recruit for your group. Okay, there's a lot of things you can do to help recruit in your group. It doesn't necessarily have to be not tough. So there's a lot of flexibility in awards that makes them more fun than others. And sometimes you don't even know you're earning them. Um, let's go ahead and go through just to make sure. Everyone knows what all the awards are. Oh, they have a question. Uh, so, um, what if uh, you do stuff with your group, but like you're also putting a lot of work into the VOA as well? What if you're putting a lot of work into the VOA? So you can talk with your advisor, and the cool thing about it is sometimes the VOA events you work on can count to your rewards that you get. You just have to check with your advisor. But my advisor will not let me. This is not cool, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, not Mr. Bush, my crew. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bush would let me use my crew advisor. My crew advisor He's like, you like it too much, so it doesn't count. Wow, that's not a caveat. Well, we like venturing a lot, what do you expect? Well, venturing crews just steal scouts from troops. No. This is a real one. This is a real yeah. A, this is a real one that people will ask you, especially if they're scout masters. So sometimes, yes, don't tell them that. That's the bad answer. The answer is always no, they don't steal. If anything, what they do is they keep older scouts that would otherwise leave scouting in scout, right? So you know you know that kid, the kid, the eagle to 15. All the kids in his troop are between the ages of 12 and 13. And he's like, nah, I'm not about to be here with one of the 13-year-olds. I'm a cool 15-year-old now, and I'm going to yeet on out. No, venturing stops that. And that's great, right? Because venturing gives them somewhere where they can be with their peers, and they can do things they want. They don't have to go to true handouts and be like, cool, I'm babysitting. They're going somewhere. <laughs> Sorry. It's a, that's one of the great things. It helps keep that older youth, this, you know, Fifteen to seventeen-year-olds that otherwise wouldn't have a reason to stay in scouting, and if they're staying involved in venturing, that means they're more likely to participate in true things because they're still signed up anyway, right? That's the play. That's always the sell on how scouting, venturing is not stealing from scouts. To PSA. Um, how can venturing be a return on investment? So a return on investment is how do we make money? How does venturing make money? What can venturers do to make money so that they're not the negative net value? Spaghetti dinner. <laughs> the spaghetti dinner? Yeah. Jada, would you care to elaborate on how spaghetti dinner makes money? So your crew can make a big pot of spaghetti, right? <laughs> so then you invite people to come and pay like five or ten dollars and you guys provide like maybe a show or something else <laughs> with the meal to kind of have like um, a kind of a fundraiser kind of thing going on. So, so your own little fundraiser? Yeah. Yeah, so you can do fundraisers. My crew does car washes. We do tons of car washes. We also sell firewood. We don't do camp parts because those don't work. Um, but we do lots of car washes and lots of firewood. You can do spaghetti fundraiser. Um, I think that I have to. I have this like a pancake thing that you can do, where if you buy so many pan, like you get enough people to buy pancakes, they'll finance something. Um, there's lots of little options. Get a rich advisor. You get a rich advisor. <laughs> That's not a viable option. Um, what are some? What are some of the fundraisers y'all do? There's, there's also one um, gun show. Yeah. You have a gun show in Texas or whatever. Yeah. 
uh, pretty much all the vendors take down the set up. Uh, or, and usually if you do it for a year, they'll give you a booth for free, and you can sell the items there. My crew also did concessions at SMU. We'd go work a concession booth on the football game night, and they'd make money doing that. Um, anybody else? Yeah, I'm you can teach training, so if you teach like the ILSC, you can charge a small fee and then make a little bit of a profit off that. Uh, my crew is working with a local rotary club, and mm -hmm. uh, they do some kind of service project, and then that rotary club, they provide some kind of donation to the crew as well. Uh, and they will get a few hundred dollars. All right. See, there's lots of there's lots of ways for ventures to make money. So when people are like venturing, it's just an, it's a black void in which all money goes. You say no, not true. Here's how mentors can make money, and then you list any of the things we just said. Those are all great ways to be like, no, crews can finance themselves. Um, what are the rules about people in entry? You will meet a lot of people. Usually, they're on the older side. They're still finishing their eagle, and they're like, well, I want an eagle, but I don't want to be in my troop anymore. My eagle for my group. What are the rules about that? You have to be first class. You have to get to first class, right. So once you hit first class, you can sign up with your crew and you can finish all your eagle requirements through your venture crew, which is really nice because it's a crew and you can still get your eagle. So it's like two pluses in one. Um, anyone have any other things that maybe they've heard? This was just like my list that I came up with at 2 a.m. Um, but there's lots of other questions you will be asked. Can venturers earn merit badges? Can venturers earn merit badges? I do not know the answer. Yes. 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 Yes
Uh, they're the reason you serve. So quote Mr. Bush, gold and blues are a golden reason to serve. Y'all don't have gold and blues, so y'all have a silver reason to serve. But it's still a gold reason. So it's for real, guys. You're here. You're here. You're here. You're here. I'm sorry, no, I can't. But for real, guys, you're here to serve other people. I know that sometimes, like, you're like, oh, well, I'm president, I'm vice president, I'm so cool. And I get it, it's a natural human response to power. Just try and, like, remember that you're here because you love venturing, and you're here because you love helping other people love venturing. That's why you're here. <coughs> right? Hopefully, that's why you're here. And then elevator pitches, but we have lunch. So we'll be home. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're good? All right, so we talked prior to lunch about a lot of the things that go into an elevator pitch. We talked about questions you might need to address. We talked about um, proper conduct and what you're expected to behave as. We're going to discuss a couple more things before we go into some elevator pitches, and then we'll do some wonderful examples. Um, obviously, every time you meet someone, you need to shake their hand, you know, your, your standard operating procedure for when you meet people is to shake your hand when you leave, you need to formally introduce yourself, just reminders about those sorts of things that sometimes might elude you when you're on the spot and you get nervous. Um, remember to keep your contact information to them if you leave when you're talking to somebody about mentoring so that they can get back to you and hopefully if they have contact information you want to get that from them so that you can contact them you always want to have their contact information if possible because the likelihood that you'll remember to message them is much higher than that they'll remember to message you all right so in an elevator pitch what we're going to do is we're going to get a lovely somebody to come up and they're going to pretend to be someone that you might encounter in your day-to-day -day life as a voa officer and what that it might be. It could be a scoutmaster who's frustrated with venturers for stealing their scouts. It could be a confused council executive that doesn't understand what venturing does or how to start crews. It could be a parent of a boy scout who's like, why should I let my kid in venturing? There's lots of different options. And that person is going to come up and they're going to have their role, they're going to be role playing. And then you're going to walk up and approach them and it's your job to figure out who they are, what they want, and then to answer them in the most professional way possible so that you can best sell venturing. Any questions about how we're going to do that? All right. It's just a big role playing game. So, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Should we do a mock example? What do you think? Yeah. No? We'll just like throw them in? Throw them in? Wow, Ella, Ella's really... Ella, do you want to do the role playing part for the first one? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Come here. So... Uh, who wants to go first? You. <laughs> no, we're throwing all in. Alice said that we don't need to do a mock one. Nope. No, we're not doing a mock one. Y'all are just getting thrown in. Truffles, you are the most... Talking <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Truffles, go ahead and go outside while we figure out what Ella's going to be. Alright, so what do you think? Let's start off with an easier one because they have seen it. What are you feeling? I think like council is like really easy. That doesn't know like what venturing is and needs guidance on this. Not the English one. Because the DE is really like doesn't know. I would say a parent that you want to do a parent that's kind of like Yeah, because that's one of those things that they don't really know. You're going to be her child. My kid? Yeah. She's solid. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I don't know. Okay, I'm on pants. Okay. Um, I can be yeah. here if you need me. All right. <coughs> I'm dying. <coughs> Hi, camera. I'm just going to walk in front of the camera. Don't die. Hello. Hi, camera. I'm going to get a phone call. Is it I can't give you a Just tell me a little bit. Hi. 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 Hello. Howdy. Hi. Hi. I'm Ella Hirsch. Howdy. I'm Captain Truffles. <laughs> it is, uh, it's great to meet you. It is. Yeah. Well, listen, my uh, my kid came home today with this flyer with this thing called venturing on it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to know anything about that? I do. 
matter of fact. Yeah, it's a great program. Uh, we're looking, we're engaging kind of the older youth area from uh, ages 14 to about when the time they turn 21. Really get engaged in that area. Really growing. Yeah, I, I just don't know. I mean, like, I'm only 12. <laughs> 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 I mean, I just would rather her focus on people, but I just don't see why this program should like even exist since we already have Well, uh, what, what rank is she right now? <laughs> <laughs> She's a star. She's a star. <laughs> <laughs> she can actually work on evil while in venturing as well. Yeah, you just have to be at least first class, which so she's star, she's already got that. So she can, can I do it wrong? She, she can do it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She's an awesome green uniform. Well, what's the difference? I, I just understand. Well, it's her game. Why should pay extra money if my kid is in a whole other scouting program? There actually is no extra cost. You, you so pay the, you, the fee you paid for it to be in Scouts BSA Whoa, applies so. to any other program. Oh, really? Class. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Here, how about this? I'll give you my contact information. Okay. And if you send me an email, I can definitely like forward you to a whole lot of other links that can answer any other questions you have. Has my phone number, email, and any social media. <laughs> So what were some of the things he touched on? His car. Uh, you gotta, gotta give him a car. Hey. Yeah. We talked about yeah. you don't have to pay extra. Yeah. We talked about eagles. We talked about the young people first class. We got age, although she says I'm 14. Um, and you said 12. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> you're 12. Yeah. You're 12. Yeah. You're already a star. <laughs> you're already a star and you're 12. Yeah. I said wow. Wait, wait. Are you 12 or are you 14? Well, take the name. I'm 13. <laughs> but did you finish the eighth grade yet? Yeah. Yeah, I wanted you to be eligible. I don't know. I think I failed twice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I thought you did very good. I had no idea what I was walking into. So it's like yeah, it's a little hard like the first time. So we'll get better. And then you um, like I, yeah. I thought that giving me your business card is like not something I've seen a lot. I love orientations. Yeah, I um, that's something we're always, always trying to promote people yeah. to do. Is giving people like a way to communicate with them. It costs me like maybe seven bucks person. to buy 250 of those. Yeah, it's so like a real business card. <laughs> 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 I don't even know what it is. You should probably get some. It's with an official case. Yeah. Well, I saw the case, I was like, wow. I, I was like, I was surprised you're pulling it out. I was like, what is he pulling out? Like a little small piece of paper? Okay, so <laughs> is that special? You can keep it. I got too many. Um, all right. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, while I'm up here, I did put my business card in all of y'all's folders. So it has my personal cell phone and all my contact if you need yeah. to ever talk to me. Anytime you just call me. So. I think all of us carry our business cards. Yeah. I just want you. The only the Facebook thing works. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right, who wants to go next? The girl with the red hair. Alice. Okay. And she wants to go. Oh, Hannah. Is there going to tax? Well, we need another adult. I can do it. I want to do one. Can go together? You need an adult. She'd be a whiny old lady. No, I already got mine. I know what I'm doing. Do you want me to go outside? I'm not a dog. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to do this one, and then Mr. Bush can do one. I know which one I want Mr. Bush to do. Oh. All right. Bye. Okay, so I'm going to do a, a mom that's like, or a, a, I'm probably going to do like a troop, like a um, scout master. And what they're going to want is they're going to be like, I have a troop. How do I start with a crew? Where do I get some resources? What do I what do I need to do, right? That's what I want to do. But that's what you're gonna see a lot. It's like, oh, I'm in a troop. And I kinda like the idea of entering, but I don't know where to start. Like I don't know how to start a group. That's when you'll see a lot. Any any objection? No. Alright. Alan. She heard that. Can you hear me? No, I was saying hear you. Yeah, can hear anything. Okay. Amy. Nice um, to meet you. I'm a scoutmaster with 
Troop 666. Oh, um, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's on video. <laughs> um, I have a, you're with the area or the council, right? The council. You're with the council, okay. So I have a troop and I've got like four kids and a couple of them within the troop, including my kids, they like like venturing. And we want to start a crew because there's no crew in our area. Yes. And I don't know how to do that. Like, yeah. what do I need to do? So what you're going to do is you're going to get in touch with me and um, be my president. We can help you with char chartering crew and help to guide you through that. Can I give you my number? Yeah. I Oh, just a couple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm a, thank you. It's good to meet you, Alex. Nice Thanks so much. All right, so she hit on, she made sure you're your contact info. Give contact info. It's a big one, right? Um, she also said, yeah, it was a charter. Um, you should have definitely touched more on like sponsoring, like who can yeah. be a sponsor, what does it mean to be a sponsor. She's probably like that mom in that instance is probably familiar with sponsors because she's from the troop. But there's all these usually going to be questions like, can I sponsor my group with the same place that I sponsor my troop? Things like that, right? Pretty much that might have been charter, a question. So like go more in depth on charters because usually, you know, get in touch with your charter or... Mm -hmm. Getting in, um, you might want to have... I was hoping to get more opportunities to talk about like um, like what materials you would need to do a crew, how many people do you need to start a crew, it's five, Yes. you need five to start a crew, right, so just things like that, you need to know how many people start a crew, what materials you need, awards, answering the questions off. Is that something really that you should expect the team to be able to answer or should they redirect you to an adult? Well, we should more. be able to give fundamental answers and then be like, here's somebody you can talk to for more information. Yeah. But you should know like a fundamental outline of what's going on. Okay. Um, just because <clears throat> as a VOA, you do represent venture and you are expected to know some of those answers. All right. Ella? Um, You're raising your hand? Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, try and talk a little longer. Yeah. Uh, that's the only thing that I have, but it was still... Yeah, they, what you kinda, did. But like, good. really like to give them more time to get comfortable talking about the subject. Oh, for me? Well, I just mean like, in general. Okay. Just run it a little longer. But yeah. also, um, are you going to talk about MMs? No, I didn't put that in there, but you can talk about it if you like. Uh, so you were kind of asking like, what, what type of things should they be doing and know and be able to talk about MMs is like a really good thing that we like to push and that's Membership, um, manpower, <laughs> and um, <laughs> money. I think it is money. Uh, there's actually a fourth one, but we never talk about it. But yes, membership. so those are the three best things to talk about, especially like the scout exists. We haven't got an example of that yet, but membership, money, and manpower. All right. Who wants to go next? <laughs> are we just going down the line? <laughs> No, All right. Jacob's She's going to start outside. Right. Mr. Bush. Yes. It's your turn. All right, good. What are we going to do? I'm going to go. I want you to be a counselor. I want you to be a counselor. Okay, so I'm going to cast exec and. Uh, one, one like we have in area two. Yeah. And so this is, Hannah's is going to be a venture, and I want to talk to her about the story. Does she yeah. know I'm going to be a counselor? Wait, 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 Harry, can sit back out real quick. He needs a minute to get in character, I'm sorry. <laughs> everybody everybody uh, hear what we're doing. Right? Okay, this is, like a, this is like a huge treasure. We're really have to bring my acting act out of this because I cannot act like the camps can do. I don't have quite that, uh, that character. Okay, so any questions? About, by the way, does everyone know who their council exec is? Their council no, yes. exec is. Yeah. Who is, uh, well, no, wait, no, who is no, yours? Yeah, that's Wayne. Who is yours? The Wayne Steve. Yeah, that's right. Who is yours? That's right. Who is yours? 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 Who is Okay, here's a, here's a good question. Okay, we're going to get a hand in here. Come on in now. Okay, Mr. Bell. Hey, Hello. 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 Hello.
uh, council executive for the uh, AAA uh, council up here in the Panhandle. You know, with AAA, you've heard of our council before? I'm not sure I have, but I'd love to know more about it sometime. Well, the AAA, we call it AAA council, it stands for Always Active and Adventurous. Uh, and what we want to do, I want to talk to you, I, I'm, I, I came over, I'm retired from the military, I was in the Merchant Marines and the Coast Guard at the same time, they only allowed three of us to do that. But we want to form a venture group. We don't have one in our AAA council, so I have no clue how to form one. They didn't teach us that when I went through the scout executive training. Can you tell me how we can form a venturing group? Well, you can contact the area you're in and get the area council and get the, their help. What area am I in? Well, you have to look at your location and you can go into the I'm in, I'm in the Texas Panhandle. Do you have any idea what area that is? Uh, area 2. Area 2. Is that the central region area 2? Okay, all right. So, who, 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 do I, who should, do you all have any idea who I should talk to at the area level about forming a venturing group? You can contact the area to advisor or president. Who is the area to advisor? Do you know? <laughs> Pardon me? David Bush. David Bush, okay. All right, now, do you know, Anna, how long have you been in venturing? Do you think we should take our time and start a crew? Yes, sir. I think it's an amazing opportunity to um, gain more leadership skills and uh, go learn new things and go new places, do new activities. It's been a really cool experience for me, getting people involved in my school and to come together and meet new people. What's the, what's the most fun you've had in venture? Um, probably meeting new people from different grades and different places. And then my crew, we also do like a sort of that we've done twice so far, and we trip this one. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm very familiar with Cub Scouts. I was a Cub Scout once. And the good thing about being a Scout executive yeah. is the Cub Scouts sell popcorn. They sell a lot of it. And I was a Boy Scout, too. And the Boy Scouts, they sell popcorn and a lot of it. I never was a venturer. Don't know really much about venturing, but do they sell popcorn? Venturing usually, they don't sell popcorn, but they come up with their own ways to fundraise and gain money for their activities that they take part of. For example, my crew, they go to, they've gone to the diner and they fundraise and they get a certain percentage of the profits. That way. Stop the time out. How long are we supposed to be able to just... It's yeah. about a good time to end it. Good time to stop? Yeah, it's a three to like four minutes. Okay, all right. Good job. Let's get in. <laughs> Tough. It was a little tough. Now, a couple of quick, can I make some comments before oh, Ella yeah. criticizes me? Uh, I mean, critiques me? Uh, Hanny did a good job. Uh, just a couple of things that, that y'all as council officers and as area officers need to know, okay? Not every council is the same. Councils are different sizes, okay? For example, I mean, not just geographically. They, they measure councils based on the number of members, membership size, okay? They have different classes. I don't know all the details. It's not that critical. But here's something to know. I'm going to answer a question Amy asked just a while ago. Every council, whatever size it is, has a council executive, okay? And, every, and so you should know who your council executive is, okay? Right now, the Willa Council... They don't have a council. I'm going to say the place. Uh, oh, we, we don't, we we don't, don't know. know. Yeah, yeah, you don't know who it is. Like, I don't know who it is. Normally I try to find out. Uh, but we're very fortunate in area two. Can we turn this off for just a second? Yes. Uh, when you get old like me, you just. Uh, but we're very fortunate because in our in area two, how many councils do we have in area two? Yeah. Nine. Oh, well, what? Nine. Nine councils. We have all of our council execs have been pro venturing. Okay. Uh, so that's a good thing. So, so this was not a hard sell to have a council executive wanted to start a venturing crew. Uh, some councils, especially the larger ones, but even some of the medium-sized ones, the council executive, remember his responsibilities or her responsibilities are Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, venturing, Sea Scouts, exploring, learning for life, fundraising, camp maintenance, uh, taking care of problems, Lots of things going on. So you, of all those active, uh, managing a staff, hiring, uh, you know, taking care of a, a problem when mama calls because Junior didn't pass his second class board review like she, she thought he, she should have. Oh, who was that? Uh, I might have been. Oh, they turned the lights off. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, that's fine. We can hey, we can we can talk in the dark. So the, the the key thing to remember is know your council executive, but also find out if your council has, and this is for the area officer especially, is there a venturing staff advisor? A lot of councils have a venturing staff advisor. Circle ten is an example. Sam Thompson is the council executive of Circle Ten. Greg Taylor is the venturing staff advisor. So the scout executive can appoint one of the professional staff to really be the person that works with venturing. Okay, for a while in, in uh, East Texas Area Council, our staff advisor was um, Tom Blondin. Uh, he, he left, got married, left. I'm drawing a blank. Went to Tarleton State. I remember that. I can't remember his name. Uh, Longhorn Council. Your staff advisor, Jeff Peters. John Cole is your executive. Isn't Jeff Peters your staff advisor? Do you know? Uh, well, our uh, it's technically Chris Bankus, but it's okay. not there. Like our staff advisors for different programs, like okay. programs are technically under Jeff Peters. All right, good. So, so that's that's something to, to remember. And then, uh, like like Amy said, one of the one of the Hannah did right. She said, you know, there's a, there's a lot of little check steps you got to go through to form a crew. The, the basics, though, again, are you got to have how many ventures to start a crew? Five. Five, five minimum. Okay. Uh, does it have to be all boys, all girls? Does it have to be co-ed? You have to have five. Uh, you know, three of one, two of the other, four and one. What's the what's the? Do you have to have? Do you have to have mix to, to be a venture crew? No, no, no. Do you have an all girls crew? Do you have all guys? You can't. That's exactly right. Good job. Okay, so there may be some of those questions. What do y'all have a recommendation about whether it should be all girl, all guy, or co-ed? Co-ed. Co 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 Our recommendation is probably co-ed. I think the charter order also has a say in that. They do, yeah. they absolutely do. Okay, and so that's another another point we really need to get into is you 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 to, in order you got to have kind of a minimum you got to have five youth to join, you got to have at a minimum you got to have a crew advisor as a unit leader, you got to have a crew committee chair, and you got to have at least uh, two com one committee member. I think you got to have three minimum three adults. Charter, you have a charter member, right? Oh, you have a committee chair. Yeah, got a committee chair. And a, uh, you got a committee chair, a committee member, and at least a, a crew advisor. And then you got your your charter organization rep. And and again, what's a, just think to yourself real quick. If you're going to form a crew, what would be a a great prospect to, to for a charter organization rep? I mean, excuse me, a charter organization. Uh, uh, usually, it's like a an or, a chair, uh, like a service club, like a Lions Club or Kiwanis Club or a church or a PTA, uh, maybe a union hall, they're going to be your sponsor. What what would be someone who you're trying to recruit a, to, to, to support, sponsor, accrue, where would you go to? Who would you think about? Existing troop. Yeah, a, a charter organization that has an existing troop or pack, but especially troop, okay? So, uh, but you got to have that. And then, uh, you, you gotta have the approval and then there's a there's an application and all that. You don't have to worry about that, your adults advisor worry about that. But it's a good idea to kind of know those those fundamental basics as Amy says. Any questions about talking? And don't be afraid of Scott Executive. Let me tell you something. Especially the ones we have here. I want to I want and, and about our area. Of course our new area director is coming, he should be here any minute now. His name is Phil Shipley. I don't know if you all know, he is driving from Amarillo, Texas today to come be with y'all. Yeah. That's that's the kind of commitment we've got. And, and they want to hear from you. What I, if I was a council executive talking to Hannah or any of y'all, I would really want to talk about how to form a, a, a crew. I'd want to just talk to Hannah about why she's adventuring and what all she's done and what all she's learned, okay? Because that's their payback. Uh, and they love hearing those stories. Final point, popcorn. Okay, let's talk about that. Crews can sell. Crews, crews can sell popcorn, okay. They can say <laughs> here, they don't have to, but but here's let me just kind of again this is this is you're not gonna find this in any manual anywhere. This is just David Bush on how to have this, how to have a successful venture program. Uh, understand this when in our crew we do the diner, we do things, uh, car washes, uh, garage sales, and all that. When you have one of those kind of fundraising events, by the way, before you have a fundraising event, what must you do? Anybody know? You have to Dan. You have to get approval from the council. Cancel the fundraising. You have to get a you know, fundraising permission slip, so to speak. Why do you think? By the way, one of the things we try to do is not just tell you what the rules are, but explain why we have those. Why, why do you think the, the Boy Scouts requires a unit before they can have a fundraising event to go to the council and get approval to do it? So we don't do money laundering. Because <laughs> you're wearing their you're wearing their insignia, and if you misrepresent them while you're fundraising. 
It, it is not uncommon. I get calls probably three or four times a year from different councils. Someone's going out door to door, it's claiming they're a scout group, trying to raise money, and they're not a scout group. Lots of folks try to try to make money on us because we've got a good we've got a good brand, has a lot of value. We we stand for something very positive, so people try to take advantage of that. So the reason why you have that is number one, they can make sure it's a it's a good fundraising. Sometimes you may have an idea, hey, we want to do this. Uh, and you find out it's a pig and a poke, and it's not going to really raise money for you, and the company you're dealing with are scam artists, and your scout executive or your staff advisor will know that. All right, I know I'm getting way off, but I'll just sit down and I'm just going, come on, Mr. Bush, let's get with the program. But the key thing is, back to popcorn, when, you, when a unit sells popcorn, the council gets, a, they get some, some of the benefits of that, the return on that, on that effort, part of that goes to the council. So the scout executives like their units to sell popcorn because it, it puts a little money in their coffers as well. The, the unit gets some money, the council gets some money. So that's one way to maintain healthy relationships, you know, keep your scout executive happy kind of thing. Every now and then you sell popcorn, okay? Just an idea. All right, any questions for me? All right, thank you for letting me go over time. Oh, it's no problem. All right, so, see next. All right, so this time Jada's gonna go. Oh, I've got a fun one. <laughs> so, Gina, yeah. you're going to be a scout master who's. I'm sure you're just chilling <laughs> scouts. <laughs> Angry birds. <laughs> Angry birds. <laughs> All right, you got it? Oh, Miss Venture. What? 
What do you plan on doing with my kids? <laughs> Why would my scouts be in, interested in your program? Well, we do a lot of mentoring. We do like leadership type programs, and we also want to keep them in scouting. So when they get older, they can join scouting and stay in scouting. Okay, I see how it is now. That's interesting. But what if they wanted to get their eagle? They can earn their eagle if they are first class. They can come over to the crew and they can work on their requirements as well. That's interesting. Maybe you guys aren't aliens. <laughs> All right, I appreciate that. Thanks. Not to be you. <laughs>
I mean, yes, you can definitely socialize through it, but there are outdoor opportunities and there are leadership opportunities just like there are for Scouts PSA. All right? Talk about the leadership opportunities. I told totally you right. No, it's okay. Um, one of the things that she could have also brought up that she didn't was the VOA is a leadership opportunity that is presented to venturers. Not everyone chooses to pursue it, but it's definitely an elevated skill range, um, elevated plane in which you can test your leadership skills. So, all right. Does any, do we want to do, can anyone think of one more that we need to do, or can we pretty much hit all our bases? I think we hit all of them. Let's, let's talk, let me, let me ask, I, I got a couple questions for the group. Okay. Yeah. You know, that I get sometimes, about measuring these are these are just kind of serious stuff here uh, uh, but of course one of the one of the main differences between venturing and scouts psa is what that what else co-ed Co yes okay and let me just tell you don't be surprised if if even veteran scout leaders adult leaders uh they think that uh the, a major problem in venturing is uh, the co-ed members doing things that they ought not do. All right. And so, one of the things that you that you need to be prepared to do, at most every crew, uh, you, you have kind of standard operating procedures. For for example, uh, when when your crew, uh, J. W. When your crew goes camping, you're yeah. camp. Yeah. yeah. Do do the uh, the young ladies and young men share tents? Nope. No. Okay, does anybody in their, in their crew have, have young ladies and young men share tents? No. By the way, I appreciate the enthusiastic response. Hey, that was a good answer. No. Not even their brother and sister. No. Uh, not even their brother and sister. No, not even their brother and sister. Young men, young women do not share tents. They're not allowed okay. to Fathers and daughters don't share uh, tents. Fathers and daughters don't share tents, okay, in venturing, okay? So we don't do that. Now, uh, do, what do we... What do, like, uh, do we do we you know have communal showers? No, yeah. no, no. 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 Don't do that. Okay. And in fact, uh, when you go, uh, when when you when you go uh, on an, on any kind of event, do you always have co-ed adult supervision? Yes. Okay. So those are some of the things that that you need to uh, to remember to be able to say to kind of dispel some of these myths and rumors. Okay. That makes sense. Everybody understand it. We take it for granted because we kind of we understand what they are. But a lot of the folks out there don't. They need to be educated. So sometimes, especially if you're talking to a parent uh, or, an, or an adult, an old person like me or a grandparent like me. We have any other grandparents in the room? No, just one. That's me. Uh, and if you want to see pictures of my grandchildren, I have a bunch on my phone. I can show you. Yes, they don't look like me. They're cute. They're on Facebook. And uh, the, the key thing is be ready to explain uh, that these are the protections we have in place, and it's a little bit more detailed than just youth protection. Uh, it's it's just kind of the way we do it, so none of that stuff goes on. And you can, you know, you can you can even be almost kind of humorous about it, but try to kind of get them calm down. You can say, look, Mr. Bush, we appreciate you bringing your granddaughter to look at venturing, and let me just assure you, there's no hanky panky that goes on in venturing activities. Okay, it just doesn't happen. And I know that sounds kind of corny, but when you get to be older, you worry about that kind of thing, all right? What happens if you have a, uh, I'll tell you what happens in my crew, if I catch uh, a, a male in a female tent, or I catch a female in a male's tent, what's going to happen? They're going home, and they may not ever come back, okay? Now, there will be some exceptions if it's for rendering first day, but I better be hearing them yelling the whole time. Help, 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 we need help over here. Otherwise, we got a major problem, okay? Now, let me just, let me give you a little statistic, okay? I, I worked, Tom and I worked the last two national jamborees at Foxtrot Base Camp, okay? Which is where we had all the ventures. So it was the only co-ed, and we had the internationals there, the only co-ed base camp, okay? I did, I worked there in 2013 and in 2017. Okay, how many ventures do you think we had to send home because they violated these kind of rules we're talking about? Two. Zero. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Zero. <laughs> now, we did have a little bit of an issue in 2017. It kind of goes back to what Brandon said. This is just a little trivia. Okay, we had uh, two under 21 aged youth, one male, one female. That came as youth ventures and they didn't want to share a tent. And they felt like they had the right to share the tent. You know why? They were married. They had just gotten married. 
<laughs> okay. Do you think we told them they could share a tent? No. Yes. No, no share a tent. You're a youth, you don't share a tent with, a, with someone of the opposite sex. Were they opposite over 18? They were over 18, were 18 under 20, they were under 21. But they went as youth. They went as youth. Okay. Yeah, they don't share a tent. So, we'll, we'll, so if someone says, well, how do you know? You can, you can say, look, our area advisor, Mr. Bush, you know, he's, he's tried to, I mean, they just don't, you just don't, they, they've experienced a lot of these little problems, they just, you, we just don't go there. You know, they just don't have to worry about that, okay? So, so be aware of that as well. All right. That's, so no, getting married won't save you. No. <laughs> so just because it's legal, you can do it in Scotty. That's right. That's exactly, that's a good way of saying it. Just because it's legal somewhere else doesn't mean you can do it in Scotty. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good talk, Mr. Bush. So yeah. Wife and tea, y'all. All right, that's it. I have, that's everything I have for elevator. Are we ready?